Hey everybody, Brent Johnson here with Hard Fuel Automation. This week I'm going to talk about how we do a for loop utilizing an array. Lots of times people get into having to make really long programs to take in a bunch of inputs and get a bunch of outputs on your PLC. This for loop array is really awesome. It actually simplifies the code and makes it much more of a simple program that makes it look you're less likely to have more mistakes and stuff like that so let's hop into it I'm going to show you a, a little intro on it and then I'll show you what I actually put together in automation studio and I'll compare it to some of the other ways of doing the same thing all right before we get started I'm going to show you the program that I created this is a for loop array program as you can see right here I've got in my main cyclic I've got a simple for loop where basically I'm going to index, I'm going to have this i1 as a variable, and I'll go to the next page that talked about the variables, and it's going to be equal to zero, and then it's going to index up to 15 by ones. Each time it indexes, it's going to execute the code right below here, this if else statement, and it's going to be looking for these different arrays that we have created as variables as well. And that's how we're going to be looking at all these sensors in our project. So basically, here's the variables I created. I showed it both ways, uh, the table format or the text format. The table format, we've got four, or both ways, we've got four different variables. We've got i1, which is an, in, in, an integer. That's how we're going to index through each one of these, these arrays up to 15, from 0 to 15. Then we've got our sensor array data. It's a Boolean. And then, then you'll notice you got the brackets and then 0 dot dot 15 and the brackets. And then I've got an output array as well, which is a Boolean with the brackets of 0 dot dot 15. And then I put a reset in there so you can reset everything. Same thing is applies here. I just showed it in the structured text format. So the first cycle of the loop is how this works out. Basically, since in my program I've created i1 to equal 0, everything else where we had i1 previously is going to change from i1, it's going to change to 0. So my sensor array 0, my output array is going to be 0, and that's what it's going to index to. You can see that that's what I created here in this program, and that's how it's going to run. Then the next second cycle of the for loop, it's going to loop another time and it's going to index up to one. So I1 is going to equal to one. And you can see that it changed it, that I1 in all the areas that I had made I1 in the program. Then the second, the third cycle, it's going to change it to two. The fourth cycle, it's going to change it to three. Fourth cycle, it's going to change it to four. It's going to keep going all the way up until we get up to the fifth, 15, which is actually our 16th cycle since we started with zero. All right, I put together this program along with several other programs, but basically we wanna have a bunch of inputs and a bunch of outputs, and this is a really great way to show this or to do this program without taking up much code. So I'm gonna just go ahead and open up my sensor array program that I showed you earlier. And you can see it only takes up 20 lines of code. If I compare it to a different way of just doing an if else program, look at all the lines it takes up. It takes up 109 lines of code. So I've greatly reduced my code utilizing this array, this for loop array program. I also put together a ladder program just to compare it. And I'm not really the best ladder guy, but I created it in ladder the best way I could think of. And again, it takes up a lot of space on here. You doing the same thing where I can make this simple array program. So I really wanted to show you how powerful this is. So the next thing I want to show you is my is we're going to actually go in run mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go open up a watch window. So go ahead and I'm, I already have my act my simulation activated. And I'm going to close this. I'm going to go up to my sensor array program. I'm going to right click it, hit open, and then go to watch. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert those variables that we created. So I've got the output array, the reset, the sensor array, and I1. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold the shift key and then left click on the bottom and hit add. 
And you'll notice that my output array is actually a bunch of different out outputs all the way up to 15. Same with my sensor array. That's because that that data, that that variable actually holds all of this data in there. It's a really good way to get a bunch of data in very few variables. And then I also created a map view project just so we can visual, visually see what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and just put that next to it here, my map view. And then we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna toggle some of these sensors true and false. So I'm gonna go right down here to sensor array zero. I'm gonna go over and change it from false. I'm gonna hit one, hit enter. And you can see my output one turns green. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that back to false. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for my sensor array seven, turn that to one. And you'll see output eight turns green. I'm gonna change that back to zero. I'm gonna change one of these to true. And you can see output four goes true. And we can go through our entire array and do this. I can go all the way down to my uh, sensor array 15, which is my output 16, and change that to true. And you can see that output 16 turns true. And then I can go ahead and I can click my reset button here, or I could even do it through the watch window. But as you can see, I hit reset and everything changes back. Again, this is a super powerful way to have very few variables having a ton of data, so it makes your programs a lot more simple. All right, I hope this was great. Thanks for watching. All right, that's all I had this week. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy this channel. If you do, go ahead and hit subscribe. I've got a lot of other great content related to the BNR product line on this channel and some of our other technologies that we carry through Heartfeel. Have a great weekend and please stay safe.